this tutorial is covers the the basics of uh, COBOL picture clauses or what's commonly referred to shorter hand uh, for pick clauses and uh, these pick clauses are going to be made for your individual data elements within your data divisions within your COBOL programs and uh, many times I find it helpful for the students to be given examples of the type of data that are going to be stored by your programs in order to uh, determine the data type and, and recover some of the pick clause basics. So that's the sole purpose of this short tutorial today, our covering alphanumeric, numeric, and then we'll go into numeric edited uh, towards the end. So let's assume here on the screen I have some general data to be stored in different variables and I want to decide what data type it is and then try to determine the pick clause for the data element in which this data on the each individual line is going to be stored. So if we're going to be storing Peter, we assume that that's going to be a user first name or F name. Uh, so this is actually what we refer to as alphanumeric data. Anytime the data to be stored has anything other than numerical values, uh, that is considered alphanumeric and we do are the pick clause associated with that data element item is going to be an X as opposed to a 9 so if this was as large of uh, the data could possibly uh, span as Peter which would be 5 bytes we would want to have a pick clause of pick X 5 X tells us the type of data that's going to be stored and 5 tells us the size of the data element. So here the X5 in this PIT clause means that we have 5 bytes of alphanumeric data type that can be stored in there which matches Peter. But for the same thing for Johnson there's no there's no numeric data there so we, we would see an X and if Johnson was as large of a data element to be stored in this particular um, field it covers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the largest it would need to be would be seven. Of course, now this tutorial just assumes that this is this is the largest piece of information that's going to be stored in that data element. Um, but normally we would want to be conservative, excuse me, liberal, and um, really uh, add some more to that if we wanted to say 10. Nothing's going to hurt that, but the COBOL program will allocate that and grab that much storage for utilization. Now this next data element, excuse me, the data to be stored in a data element uh, might trip some people up because we see the 367 is numeric but we also have spaces and we also have Smith Road Northwest. Well because we also we have numbers as well as spaces as well as uh, alphabetic characters that by default is also alphanumeric. Now if we were to count this up we would see that it would cover seventeen bytes. So that would be a pick X seventeen. The next one you might say it's numeric and for the most part uh, you'd be correct except for we have two hyphens within the data to be stored. If we define this as a numeric with a pick nine and then the number of bytes out to the right of that we will get an error because we cannot store anything other than numbers in a pick nine. So because those two hyphens are in there, it is by default a numeric of size 11. There are nine numbers with two hyphens. Now this other one could be tricky. If we're storing this as, say, a social security number without hyphens, we can define this as an alphanumeric. There's no problem with storing numerical data in an alpha, alphanumeric data type with pick X. So you can store numbers in X's, but you cannot store non-numbers in 9's. But you can only run computations on an IBM mainframe environment on numeric data items. So if this is, this is a number that you want to do computations to, add addi addition, subtraction, multiplication, uh, exponential raise to a power, you would need to define this as a numeric. If, however, you were not going to be calculating or computation run computations on this data element, um, you could in fact store it as an X and it would be okay. But let's assume for this case that we are in fact going to be using this number to being, be used in computation. So we can define this as a numeric, a pick 9, 9. 
So the first nine tells us the type of data, which is numeric, and the size of the data is the second nine. So there's nine characters here, excuse me, nine numbers here. Now, this one, one, two, three, four, decimal 56, is also numeric. But you might wonder about this decimal here. If we want to be able to keep track of decimal places, we must do what's called, and we must add what's called an implied decimal place. So we would have a 9-4, and here's the implied decimal place is a V, and then a 9-2. So the V allows us to keep track of two numerical, uh, excuse me, bytes to the right of the decimal. So four before the decimal and two after the decimal. Now, using that same logic, we could come here and say a pick 9 v 9 5 for this one for five data elements, excuse me, five bytes after the right of the decimal place. Students also ask me, well, why don't I see a 1 right here? Uh, a 9 with a 1 uh, after it in parentheses and a 9 by itself are the same thing. So when it's by itself, I just prefer to leave it like that. Now, Sometimes you're going to want to add commas uh, to a particular data element, especially in the output of a report or to uh, a, dis a display screen. So let's say we wanted to move this 1234.56 and have it output actually as a dollar sign 1234.56 cents. Well, because the output actually has a decimal in it as well as a dollar sign in it, we actually refer to this as a numeric edited data item. This numeric data item, numeric de edited item rather, um, we only use these for display purposes. Again, we only use numeric data item, numeric edited data items for display purposes. We will not be using numeric edited data items for computations. And rather than nines and x's per se, we're going to start seeing z's instead of nines and we're going to start seeing actual decimal places in the place of the v. So if I wanted to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to a particular data item and I wanted to display that data item such that the output put in a dollar sign for me, the comma for the thousandths place, and the physical decimal sign. Right here in the pit clause we can specify we want a dollar sign Z Z nine decimal nine nine. Okay. Don't freak out on me just yet. What the Z does is it will replace a lead a single leading zero if it exists in that data item spot in that placeholder spot if it is not a leading zero it will default to act like a regular nine and actually display the numeric item out so give it a try uh, in your COBOL programs and hopefully this should help you better understand um, the different data items and different COBOL pit clauses. Thanks.